my name is Howard Yu. I'm currently working as a senior solutions architect at Cerebral Group. Um, I used to work in astronomer, uh, but at the time that we were doing this, so, but um, yeah. So, um, you know, it's good to be here. Um, I'm very excited to be part of the Airflow Summit. It's a great open source project, and I uh, hope that um, after our presentation, you might really feel that you want to be part of it. Um, so I think part of the presentation is about like how some of the um, contributions of anybody's improvements can be part of the airflow in the future. So good to be here. Hey, my name is Dennis. Um, I'm with Amazon AWS. Um, I'm an open source developer, paid full-time work as a developer on Apache Airflow. I'm the person who implemented most of the open telemetry stuff that we're going to be talking about. Uh, Howard here did a lot of the design work and the original POC stuff. Uh, so that's why we're the two presenting this. And at the very end, there's going to be a slide with a couple of uh, QR codes, which will bring you to uh, a guide on how to actually implement it and how to make this work on your system at, when you get back. Because obviously we can't cover everything in 20 minutes. So. Okay. Uh, if you're interested in that thing, have your phone ready. The last slide will be a couple of QR codes. Thank you. So let's get to the um, the overview section here. Um, I'm not really sure, but have you heard about open telemetry? Yeah, many people. Um, it's been a it's been a few years since the open telemetry um, came to the focus, but. Um, a, one of the things is that the open telemetry, um, I just wanted to give a brief introduction about the open telemetry, what it is, and then kind of go over to why OTEL uh, for the airflow. And then um, Dennis is gonna present a little, bit, a little bit of an update about what's currently working. So we have implemented our first release of you know, OTEL support for airflow. So, but it's not really fully implemented yet. Uh, so we'll be kind of giving some overview on that and um, things about what's to come. What is our like actual future vision that we really wanted to um, have it on Airflow and then uh, more information like the barcode and things. So let's get over to it. So um, I, I know there are many people who know about the open territory, but just to give you a really simple uh, overview of what it is, it's an open observability framework. And what the observability means is that it tries to kind of attract how the application is performing without having to look into the code itself, or, or you know, kind of observe, observing, um, like you're observing um, something uh, outside of the box, basically. And in order to do so, you collect a lot of the telemetry data or real-time data, such as uh, metrics. Um, there are a couple of metrics in Airflow already, um, but also it kind of covers other things like logs um, and traces. So the, the overall hope is that by combining all those those different types of telemetry data together, you can actually form a, a much better understanding or a single view of how your application is performing, what are some of the health checks, uh, much easier and much more efficiently. So that's what the open telemetry is trying to do. But um, however, it's trying to do it in a very standardized way because uh, for the for the you know duration of all the IT histories. Many people came up with various ways to like, produce metrics, telemetry data, various ways to produce logs, the traces, and all that. And they're not really conformed, or they're not like um, kind of within any of the standards. So the open telemetry is kind of a first, first take of all those vendors trying to come up with some sort of a standardization so that nobody has to like reinvent the metrics or traces or logs like over and over again. Um, so it's, it's been funded by the Cloud Native you know, Computing Foundation project. And a lot of the vendors are like constantly evolving into a better usable, better you know, uh, usable technologies. So um, you know the, the reason why I, you know, Dennis and I got interested, and I, I think many many people who were in the mailing list or the discussion forums also got interested, was that you know when we take a look at the airflow, the the, the main uh, ways of emitting those metrics data are based on stats, right? um, and it's been up. It's been like that for years, and so. But however, the stats D doesn't really provide um, as robust um, means to produce metrics. Unfortunately, uh, it is very simple. It's very lightweight. It's, it's great. However, um, it you know we felt that you know it could actually be improved. Um, there are a number of metrics available in Airflow, like um, 
close to like 100 metrics is. But the way they're designed, the where they're emitting um, things, where they're named, um, usually is a uh, pippy problem I guess sometimes. Um, because for example, like, uh, you know, task instance success count, it actually measured the counts of all the task instances successfully uh, carry out the airflow. So it can actually see the holistic number of the successful task instance counts, but we actually don't know um, what DAG run was it based on, or you know what kind of um, you know task instances was that from. You, you just only know the task instances, and that's it. So we just wanted to make it much more you know usable by introducing, um, for example, like tags, uh, which can um, be actually described way much better. The current stats the implementation used the um, the didn't actually have the tag support. Um, so that's one of the problems with some of the metrics um, parametric data. So it used a um, a combined name of all the things put into a single metric name. Um, that works, but it also introduces uh, like a high chondrality issues. Um, and so by trying to come up with the hotel design and put it into the part of the airflow, um, we are you know trying to make sure that the airflow is well taken care of in terms of um, the, you know the standard way of um, you know producing metrics data, but not we we, we not only want to stop there. We actually want to expand the capabilities of Airflow to also emit uh, logs in a open telemetry way, so that uh, whatever vendor application uh, or the log repository it collects, it can actually be um, very useful by you know using using better filtration or using better log formatting, um, and then also be compatible with other you know, monitoring vendors, etc. Um, tracing is also a big part of the uh, motivation that we had. Um, right now, the, all the metrics data are pretty much independent. They have their own, each of the, the metric space. So the way to combine all those metrics data together is, is probably be done on top of like tools like Refana or monitoring solutions. Um, usually involves query languages um, and usually involves a way to uh, integrate or convert some of the metrics data in a form uh, suitable for those core languages to work. Um, we really want to simplify those processes by making sure that you know the traces are part of the telemetry data that the airflow in the future will produce. Um, trace information um, describes relationship between different components in a very, I don't know, like non-centric way. Not only that, um, any traces that's compatible with the open telemetry data can be actually part of it. So not only the Airflow is emitting all those telemetry data, but all other microservices who are calling Airflow, um, who are being called by Airflow, can also emit those open telemetry um, trace data so that um, you know you can actually see the end-to-end -end picture of everything from the applications to the back-end services um, with the Airflow uh, traces as part of it. So that's why you know we kind of try to um, make sure that you know uh, hotel is going to be part of the airflow feature. A little bit of a history. Um, the first kind of an inception of this idea came about at 2022 in January. Um, I was recommended, or you know, we got advised by um, um, some airflow members that in order for you to like make some significant changes to airflow, you have to first like join the discussion forum and kind of talk about it and maybe get some you know comments feedbacks or supports from the um, from the user community so that's what we did so January 2022 was the first time that we start like, discussing about hey you know there's a cool technology called hotel um, is there anybody who wants to or who wants this as part of the airflow and uh, we got some really nice feedback so immediately after that in February we started doing a POC because we don't really want to like propose anything without like verifying it first, um, and, that, and then prove that it techn technically works. So there's a brief like a one month POC period where I kind of try to uh, put instrumentation codes to emit logs and traces and metrics in hotel format. At the time, I used the hotel collector to collect all of them, and then use a third party solution um, called um, hands observability, basically to collect the metrics and the traces and logs, and then try to create some dashboards to you know, make sure that you know, whatever we are collecting can be visualized in a single place. So that kind of ended in the March, and the first AIP draft kind of work began. 
AIP means um, airflow improvement proposal. So if you really want to, as a as an open source community, if you really want to make changes to the air airflow and kind of introduce like new features or something something significant, you have to first start the AIP process. And that um, you know there are like uh, tons of guidelines of you know how to do it. But essentially, what you do is you create this proposal document based on the template, and then you submit it. Um, you will be received like an AIP number. Um, so it, in this case, it was forty nine, um, and then it will actually go into the draft mode. Um, and then over the period of time, uh, May, uh, the AIP 49 was finalized and submitted. And on the June, um, I believe the voting process began. Um, there's actually no like definite timeline on when you want to start the vote or not. Like whenever you feel that you want to, you know, kind of a, you know, make, uh, move into the next level, you will actually like declare the uh, that on the community forums that hey, you know, AIP 49 is actually premature. You want to, you know. Push for this. Um, votings usually um, are taken about a week, um, so we kind of received any anybody who wants to like reply and like, submit a vote. We got some um, very nice, significant like votings. Um, so at the time, I think um, it was it was over. So the vote passed, the AIP proposal passed, and uh, we are you know ready to kind of rock and roll here. Um, however, <laughs> I, I really wish like. Um, so next, what we did was we were looking for developers. We were looking for somebody who can, you know, who does have the right skill set, right experience, and also the right understanding of the OPEL technology to kind of start the project and maybe start writing codes and you know, implement it. Um, but that didn't happen until February 2023 because, um, you know, it's an open source project, so you know, people can be busy. Um, Dennis was the first one who wanted to volunteer to start working on it, but uh, unfortunately, due to other previous engagements, he was not, um, he didn't really have spare time to work on it. And so the project actually went all the way until February 2023, where you know, the Hotel 4 Airflow development actually started. Um, and then it actually got, went, went pretty, pretty well, pretty quickly, because we've already done the POC. We actually had some significant amount of codes. Um, it was only a matter of Making sure that those codes implemented will be, you know, will be reliable, will have no bugs, or, you know, it's kind of work with the newer version of the airflow, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that was um, something um, done until July 2023. So July 2023, um, while we were um, working on a draft of this proposal, um, I think the hotel for airflow gauges and counters um, was released and become part of the main branch of the airflow. So today you can actually use it. Um, it's not it's it's not complete, but the the the, the existing uh, metrics is like gauges and counters are can be emitted in the open telemetry. So that's how the the timeline looks. So I, I, we are just kind of it was really interesting because it was the first time for me to actually like do any of the proposals or prepare the proposals. Um, obviously, it had some challenges, but um, due to the the, the kind nature of the airflow community and everybody just wanted to be supportive and helpful and if it's a great great idea there are um, many many people who are just volunteering and willing to help um, I think Jared Jared was one of the biggest sponsor of our <laughs> little project here so big thanks to Jared um, and without him we well, heck, wouldn't wouldn't actually have been here okay so um, what currently works I, I think Dennis he, he was the main <laughs> coder for this, so could you like walk through some of that? Yeah, thank you. Um, so Howard, uh, like you said, he did most of the design in the very early layout and uh, design work, and I took over with the actual implementation. Uh, so where we're at now, what currently works is everything that previously worked with Stats D currently works with OpenTelemetry. Uh, as I mentioned, the very last slide, there'll be a demo that a QR code to a demo that'll show you exactly how to get it all working. Um, I used Prometheus and Grafana in the demo, if they're both free, open source, uh, and you'll be able to follow along with that and get it actually running in your own environment. Uh, so anything that currently works to get metrics through StatsD will now work with OpenTelemetry. And then uh, what's coming? So as he mentioned, this isn't done yet. We have a, uh, some good bit of work to do. Uh, currently, there are a bunch of st stats 
a current a bunch of metrics which are being emitted twice. This goes back to something that he mentioned earlier. Uh, StatsD doesn't support tagging. So what you end up with is an incredibly ridiculously long metric name where it's all just mashed together with underscores. Uh, so it would be like local task job dot task exit dot job ID dot dag ID dot task ID dot return code and you get like a 400 character long metric name. Uh, with open telemetry now we have access to tags. So the metric is now called local task dot task exit and everything after that just gets tacked on as tags that you can filter and search by. Uh, so in order to maintain backwards compatibility for the time being, we're emitting them both side by side. Uh, the eventual goal is to remove the painfully long, unsearchable, unfilterable, useless, long name. Um, so that's what's coming up in the near future. Uh, logging. When we started this, OpenTelemetry had just introduced logging. It wasn't really something that they had full support for. So that's kind of on the back burner for us. But one thing that's really nice, again, is that uh, you can tag your logs. So we'll be able to attach logs to traces, which we'll explain in a moment. And you will also be able to tag your logs, which, again, makes it so much easier to find what you're actually looking for. If anyone here has ever done a log dive on a failing DAG, Good luck. Uh, it's nearly impossible to ever find what you're looking for. Uh, so being able to tag your logs and search and filter by tags is going to be great. And spans and traces, which we're actually about to talk about next. Uh, this is the big thing. This is the main reason why so many people wanted open telemetry. So the groundwork is all laid. This is the next step. I would love to get to it. I don't know when I will. If this is interesting to you, please reach out. We would love some help. So spans and traces are like um, I guess the the third um, elements of the, the the open telemetry which has gained well well it, it actually was gained from the microservices architecture um, you know, tons of microservices services running separately but cohesively together um, there there's got to be a means to collect the, the executions and the durations or some of the some of the telemetry data separately, but uh, kind of combining it all, all at the back end and form a um, you know distributions of those traces or the service maps. Um, I think traces do have a great potential uh, inside the airflow because of the nature of the uh, how how the airflow runs. Right, it runs um, many DAGs um, and calls the execution uh, very separately. So some of the huge um, data processing happens outside of airflow. And you know, apparently, Airflow cannot actually see them or collect them or have a hard time collecting it. With the distributed distributed tracing, um, those and third party systems can also emit open telemetry traces together, and when combined together in, inside an observability platform like Grafana, for example, or Datadog or any any modern observability um, platform, we can actually see the whole pictures linked together, and that's very exciting um, because you know, DAG runs. Um, are not um, purpose to be run alone. It is um, purpose to be interactive with other systems as well. So this is one of the examples or the screenshots that um, happened during a POC where we simply just kind of instrumented uh, each of the uh, task instances and the schedulers and the local executors um, all emit separate trace messages um, combined with the trace IDs, obviously. But And we had kind of tested around like propagating those trace IDs those are stored in the databases. So uh, essentially, when the task instance runs, it will pick up the trace ID, and then it will start emitting its own, you know, kind of a trace snippet. So each of those individual colors are actually like individually collected. Um, they're all being collected at the back end, but when they're combined together, we can actually form a holistic picture of the breakdown of each of these task, task instances. And you can actually see that they all start at the same time, but those local executors are, you know, kind of running in very, very small short period of time. There's a queue local worker who were uh, who had these durations, but um, you can actually see the lifespan or how long these tag instances actually exist inside the airflow. And this one is the holistic kind of a, the end-to-end -end duration of 12 seconds of the run. But not only can you see the, the whole durations, you can actually see the breakdown of each of the task instances um, as well as the workers. You could also draw like a service map. So in here, you can actually see the relationship between who's calling what, right? So 
the um, the DAG run schedule. D is actually calling the task instance, and the task instance is calling the local executor or the you know queue um, local worker here. But you know the the, the traceability of this um, compared with um, you know when you have to work with the metrics and when you have to work with the logs alone are are pretty drastic, and this improves a, a whole lot of you know for example like. How long is my worker running, and you know, what kind of average is that, and where's the bottleneck? Very easy to kind of discover using the traces. And this is one example of the traces that are combined together. But you know, as you can see, the, the POC has already proven the, the value of you know, using the, you know, the traces being embedded in the airflow can actually significantly help um, in, in case the DAG is really complicated and has a lot of the loops. Okay, so another kind of a future <laughs> that we have is, uh, let's say that um, among all the components of the airflow, workers, scheduler, and executor metadata, and external systems, um, right now, because the logs are being emitted separately, traces you know, doesn't ex exist at yet, and uh, we have like a handful of metrics, when they're kind of combined together, we can actually start you know, producing the individual traces by instrumenting them, but, and they can run you know, just about anywhere, but with the combined metrics, we can also start emitting traces and then collect them all together, um, but also the logs um, all together in a uh, standardized format called the open telemetry. Um, and then with the single collector, now, like if you want to really like, emit metrics, you might have like an agents or some, you know, daemon process that may collect certain type of metrics, but with the open collector, because everything is being emitted in an OTLP protocol, uh, we only need like a single collector or single agent that can collect traces, metrics, and logs in a very singular way. And then with that same you know, metrics protocol, now we have a myriad of you know, other monitoring tools like Grafana, Prometheus, open source, but other, other tools like APM, Dynatrace, um, you know, monitoring solution like Datadog, and Stana, all being able to receive these you know, rich set of um, combined metrics, traces, and logs. Uh, in a very similar or the same singular way, so that um, many users can actually be, you know, kind of utilize it more easily. Um, not only that, the platform metrics, which is not actually the part of the um, the, the metrics or the any telemetry data derived by the airflow, can also be collected separately and then be combined together, stitched together, and form a um, the I, I guess uh, better enriched uh, single view of everything happening um, around the airflow much easier. So that's kind of our future um, kind of vision when we started this project. Um, obviously, right now we really don't have logs or traces in place, but our you know kind of a, our aspiration or the vision is that um, by looking at this presentation and realizing how exciting this is and how helpful this is going to be, uh, I hope that you know many people can join the project and then uh, contribute a little bit into improving the airflows um, observability. All right, and then as I said, there's a couple QR codes here. The one on your left will bring you to the airflow documentation, which includes information about the metrics that are currently available and a rough information on how to get it set up. The one on your right is a blog post I published on the airflow blog, uh, which is step-by-step -step instructions on how to set it up so you can actually get this running in your environment. Um, like I said, I used two free open source solutions with Grafana and Prometheus. You can use whatever. It's an open protocol. There is a ton of options, um, but open source. <laughs> That's so, why we're here. So thank you very much for listening to um, the open parameter support option for the Airflow. I uh, hope that it was um, helpful and um, um, somewhat uh, interesting. It, you know, I think one of the part of the messages that we want to really like shout out to you guys is that uh, this is an open source, open community uh, driven um, co collaborative effort. It's really amazing. Um, don't be shy. You know, if you really want to be part of it, um, I think we had a really nice experience um, in, in general working with the, um, the the guys who are like driving the airflow. So you know, feel free to um, be part of it. Um, thank you very much for listening and. Um, I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you.